Adam, I'm a da. So let's get started on this problem. Show that if you've got an alphabet sigma with greater than one characters in it, then the language L, which is the language of strings such that each string is equal to its reversal, in other words, the language of palindromes, is an irregular language. So immediately, whenever you see us asking you to prove that a language is irregular, you should be thinking pigeonhole principle. So before we get started on this particular problem, it's a good idea to just go over how the whole pigeonhole principle proof for showing that a language is irregular works. So these proofs are contradiction proofs. And since we want to show that a language is irregular, we are going to assume for the sake of contradiction that the language is a regular language. So of course, by definition, this means that there's some DFAM with K states that decides the language. Now, in order to use the pigeonhole principle, since we've got K states, we are going to consider the K plus one strings and then you have to pick what these k plus one strings are. And you'll pick them depending on the particulars of this problem. So before we do that, let's just leave it to be decided for now and go through the template of the pigeonhole principle proof. So after you've picked your k plus one strings, since you've only got k states, by the pigeonhole principle, you know that two strings from the k plus one you selected have to end up in the same state. So let's call these for now just the blue string and the red string, and they have to end up in the same state. Since this blue string and this red string end up in the same state, we actually also know that the augmented blue string and the augmented red string must end up in the same state as well. And by augmented, I mean the blue string with another string concatenated onto the end of it, and the red string with the same thing concatenated onto the end of it must also end up in the same state. However, hopefully you've picked your blue string, your red string, and your augmentation part in such a smart way such that the blue augmented string actually ends up being accepted, and the red augmented string actually ends up being rejected. And then you should explain why this is the case. And this gives you your desired contradiction. Because we said that these two augmented strings end up in the same state, but one of them actually ended up in an accepting state, and one of them ended up in a rejecting state. So this contradiction contradicts the initial assumption that L was regular, so we know that L must be irregular as desired. So that's the general template for how the pigeonhole principle proof for showing that a language is irregular looks like. Now let's solve this particular problem. So it's kind of hard to get started on picking what these k plus one strings are because we aren't given an explicit alphabet. But we do know that the alphabet contains at least two characters in it. So without loss of generality, you can just pick out whatever characters you want, whether it be heart star, zero one, ab, whatever's easiest to write down. There might be more characters in there, there might not be, but we know for sure that there's at least two distinct characters in this alphabet. With that in mind, take a moment, pause, and try and fill out this proof template yourself. Try and pick out the k plus one strings, write down what two arbitrary strings from the set you selected would look like, and pick out what you want to concat onto the two strings in order to get the contradiction. Okay, hopefully you've paused and come up with your own solution. We're gonna go over one solution, but keep in mind that depending on what k plus one strings you pick, you could come up with a totally different proof that still works out. So the k plus one strings I'm gonna pick here are a to the n b for n from one to k plus one. So this is just to make it really clear that we've got k plus one strings. And to visualize this, we can kind of write it out that what this is really saying is the strings with one A then a B, two A's then a B, three A's then a B. So these are gonna be our K plus one different strings. So we know that two of them end up in the same state. We don't get to pick which two, we just know that two from this set end up in the same state. So it's important you don't write like, oh, the string with three A's and a B and the string with eight A's and a B end up in the same state. You just know that they come from the set, you don't know which ones they are. So we have some ai to the b and some aj to the b that end up in the same state. To make it really explicit though, this is for i not equal to j. So it's two distinct strings, even though we don't know which ones they are. Cool, so that fills out a lot of our proof for us. Now we have to figure out one, what we should be concatting onto these strings in order to complete the proof. So take a second and try and think about what can we concat to make sure that this string gets accepted and this one gets rejected. Okay, so it should be a i. So the reason it's a to the i is because this ensures that this string right here is a palindrome and this one is not a palindrome, which ensures that this one is accepted and this one is rejected. And once you've completed all of that out, your final proof looks something like this. <laughs> 